Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome to my channel. Long story short, I got a lot of books this Black Friday online, so I thought might as well show you guys. This is going to be my Black Friday book haul. So I have two packages here. I think I got like 10 books on Black Friday or Cyber Monday or whatever it was, Cyber Week now, I think they call it. One package is mainly Christmas presents for other people and the other package is Christmas presents for me. <laughs> so hopefully I dive into the one that is for me first so I can show you all the books that I got for me and then I can just show you real quick books I'm getting for other people in case you want some like Christmas ideas or something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it. Sorry for the lame background. I know I usually have like my books in the background and my desk and all that but I just wanted to do this really quick. These boxes have sat here for like almost two weeks I think because I just did not have time to film so I've just watched them sit in the corner. I can't with packages like I want to open them immediately. I cannot wait. Okay yeah I opened the wrong one first so, so I'm just gonna do the other box. I might as well call this an unboxing too because I'm in boxing these. All right, so there's four books in here. Some of these books I have wanted for so long that I just never got around to getting and I saw they were on sale, so of course I got them. Okay, so I forgot what books I got and this first book just makes me so happy because I have wanted to read this for so long and that is Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is so many people's favorite book of the year. Um, Haley and Bookland has talked about this book so many times and every time she does I'm like I have to read that, I need to read that. I haven't gotten into historical fiction really that much at all and I, I want to this year in 2021 so I think this is probably the first book I'm gonna start with. It just, oh, look at that cover. So this is in historical fiction over World Wars 1 and 2, I believe, and it is told from Aphrodite, the goddess of love. So I have a feeling we're going to be learning about a lot of love stories that happened during the war, and I just think that's awesome. I think that's a great way to get into historical fiction, and who knows, it may be one of my new favorite genres. And the book is just maroon with the pink cover. That's so cute. A sweeping multi-layered romance set in the perilous days of World Wars 1 and 2 where gods hold the fates and the hearts of four mortals in their hands. I've heard someone say that this is told from the perspective of multiple gods, not just Aphrodite, although it does say Aphrodite on the back. So I'm super excited to see how that's done. I've never read a book like that before and I'm super into Greek mythology and all that. And so yeah, I just think this is going to be a super, super good book. Everyone loves it. It's only 450 pages. So yeah, I'm really hoping to pick this up next year. The next book I got, I have wanted to read for so long. It was the first book I added to my wish list back when I made it on Amazon a while back, and that is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This is one of Stephanie Meyer's books. She has talked about it several times in like interviews, and I've always thought if I'm going to try Rainbow Rowell, this is probably the first book I'm going to pick up because I have a feeling if she liked it, then I'll probably like it. It's only like 300 pages. It looks super tiny. This is probably something I would read in like the spring or summer so that's probably what I'm gonna do next year is try Rainbow Rowell out for the first time with this book. I know it's about a romance that is set in the office I believe like in the workplace and that's like my favorite romances I've realized. I'm on my third Christina Lauren book this year and they are all romances that are set in the workplace so I'm obviously here for that. Oh okay so it looks like the guy is the emo monitor for the company whatever that means and our main character is gonna have this some sort of interest with him. I bet they're going to exchange emails not knowing who each other are, is, each other is, each other are. And yeah, I have a feeling I would like, like fly through this and probably love it. I've wanted it for a long time, so I'm really happy I picked it up. So the next two books, which are the last two books in this package, for some reason there's only four in this package, I'm going to group together because they are the same author. And that is Lost Lake and The Sugar Queen by Sarah Addison Allen. If you guys don't already know, I've been raving about Sarah Addison Allen on my channel for a minute now. I read Garden Spells this year and it was one of my favorite books of the year. Five out of five stars. It is magical realism set in a small southern town. We are following two sisters who are witches. And oh my god, I just, I love it so much. I said it then, I'll say it again. I'm going to read every Sarah Addison Allen book. And so I was hoping one of these were the sequel 
to garden spells because I know it has a like way different name but neither of them are. They're two completely different stories but I do believe it's still in her kind of world, her magical realism world. So the first one is The Sugar Queen. It looks like it is also <laughs> set in a small southern town that might be something the author just likes to do and our main character finds someone in her closet who is two parts fairy godmother brimming with warmth wit and a sprinkling of magic here is spell a spellbinding tale of friendship love and the enchanting possibilities of every new day that just it, that sounds like garden spells honestly it looks like we follow the main character and then this girl that's in the closet whatever that means again magical realism is so like oh, i just love it so much but I have a feeling this is going to be very similar to Garden Spells. And then the next one is Lost Lake. It looks like Lost Lake is magical. Our main character spent summers there. At once atmospheric and enchanting, Lost Lake shows Sarah Addison Allen at her finest, illuminating the secret longings and the everyday magic that wait to be discovered in the unlikeliest of places. Love, closure, a second chance, peace, a mystery solve, a heart mended. Can they find what they need before it's too late? So I have like no idea what this is about. Obviously it's going to be about the Lost Lake, but I don't really know anything about the characters or the plot. And that's kind of the fun in magical realism. I have a feeling this is going to be a small southern town as well, but I'm just super excited to pick up more of her books. It looks like the Sugar Queen is set in the winter and then Sarah Addison and then Lost Lake is set in the summer so that m might be when I read these two. I would love to experience her writing in different seasons to be honest just to try it out because I read Garden Spells in the fall and it was perfect for the fall time. All right now the other box. Ooh, it looks like Christmas. So this first one I have wanted to read again for a while and that is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I think is how you say it. Jimenez. No. It sounds like mayonnaise. Jim, Jimenez. Jimenez. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, this is another, you know, cute rom-com. I love to read these when I just don't want to put any effort into, like, thinking about what I'm reading. Obviously, it's really good for the spring and the summer, but I will, like, take a break from reading these and read a fantasy. And then once I've read, you know, fantasy and magical realism, I'll take a break and read these. I just kind of go back and forth. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm either in, like, one mood or the other. Oh, but this one says it's an autographed copy. Interesting. Okay. There's like Silver Sharpie autographed by the author. Interesting. I paid like not a lot of money for this at all. Okay, so it looks like the main character meets the love interest at a wedding. She's about to go through a medical procedure that will make it impossible for her to have children. That's sad. But the love interest wants a big family someday. Oh my god, that sounds so sad. That does not sound like a cute, fun rom-com. Like, look at the cover. Like, you would think this is just like a cute, fun rom-com, but I'm starting to think that this might be a little sad as well. Oh, look at the author and her puppy. Wow, this is like nothing I thought it would be, the friend zone. So maybe she's like forcing herself to friend zone him since she can't have kids one day. Ah, oh, that's, that's tough. That's real tough. I swear to God, if I read this book and at the end she has a kid, I will be mad. Because <laughs> I hate when you like read an entire book where it's like, this is set this way and it cannot change. And then at the very end, it's like, oh, just kidding. So obviously I'm already going to go into it thinking it's going to do that to my heart. So there's that. Next is Dig by A.S. King. This is laminated and yeah, this is definitely a library book. I've, that's never, this has never happened to me before. I literally got sent a library book. If you went to Dunbar High School in Fort Worth, Texas, I have one of your library books now. <laughs> that's so weird. Can I take this off? Oh my God. I don't know how to like delaminate or whatever. I might ruin the cover. So if anyone knows how to do that, if you've been sent a library book before, let me know. That is like the weirdest thing ever. I hate this. Like this was the worst thing about reading library books. Like obviously going to the library and renting books to read is, is great because it doesn't break the bank and you know, minimalism and all that. But I, I hate that. Like I hate reading a book and you, I, I just hate it. But anyway, 
getting on with it i have heard so much about this book from books and lala kayla over at books and lala as you know i love her she is just such a great booktuber and creator and i really look up to her and all i really know about this is that as king writes really weird and strange books i think they're magical realism i'm pretty sure so maybe reading sarah addison allison was a good like introductory into the genre and then now i can get kind of more like deeper into it maybe more like adult type of magical realism i know it's about a family that has a potato farm and there's some sort of inheritance so the children are all trying to get like the inheritance or something like that it says the estranged grandchildren gradually find their ways back to one another just in time to uncover the terrible cost of maintaining the family name surrealism is what they call it so magical realism surrealism i feel like that's the same thing as king explores a toxic culture of polite affluent white supremacy tears a family apart and how one determined generation has a shot at digging its way out really i did not know that's what it was about wow okay i'm like super interested to read this now i kayla told us a synopsis and she told us her thoughts on it and she really did like it but i do not remember her discussing it in that way at all so yeah super interested to pick this up now can't stand the thought of how many people have probably touched this but actually since they sold it to me maybe no one touched it that's why they got rid of it and then the last book i got for me in this haul is i've got your number by sophie kinsella is that how you say your name kinsella i'm so bad with names i'm so sorry oh wow this text is big I like that a lot. This text is really big. So again, this is another rom-com author I've never read from Sophie Kinsella before, but I've heard her name several times, so I thought I would give her a shot. Okay, so it looks like our main character's phone was stolen, and she lost her engagement ring in a hotel fire drill. She finds an abandoned phone in a trash can, so she tries to keep it, but the love interest, of course, wants his phone back. Oh, so I've got your number. I guess that makes sense. Interesting. Poppy and Sam and increasingly append each other's lives through emails and text messages as Poppy juggles wedding preparations, mysterious phone calls, and hiding her left hand from Magnus and his parents. Hmm, interesting. I'm not like super intrigued by that synopsis to be honest, but I'm always looking for easy, quick rom-com reads like this, so should be a good one, I'm sure. And then the last two books I have are Christmas presents, so if you are my mother or my grandmother, please stop watching now. I know my mom is subscribed to my channel, but I don't think she actually watches my videos in all honesty. She's talked about literally one video on my channel, so I'm sure she won't see this, but I got The Rattled Bones by S.M. Parker. I know the lighting's going a little wonky now, so I'm sorry if you can't really see it, but I just love this cover. I think it just like screams thriller, mystery thriller, and that's what she loves. So it looks like our main character is basically haunted by a ghost that is her age. New boy is in town and there's some mysterious island. There's a long thriller synopsis. You probably don't want to read it. You probably just want to like skim through it or just read the first part because it's going to tell you too much. I think we all know how thrillers are, but yeah, mysterious island. There's a ghost. A new boy shows up. There's a thriller for you. And then the other book I got was Desperate Girl girls by Laura Griffin. I actually did not know this was a mess paperback. It did not look like a mass paperback online. A tightly wound, fast-paced romantic thriller that follows a desperate woman on the run as she hides from a killer's symbolic revenge spree. And that's pretty much a summary of the synopsis right there. I do really like the blue and the yellow on the cover, but yeah, these books I'm just not... These aren't the books I really read. I do have quite a few thrillers on my bookshelves, to be honest. I have probably like six or seven that I've just never picked up. I don't know what it is, but once it is a spooky time I just like actual like spooky atmospheric books and not necessarily like mystery thrillers they tend to bore me a little bit unless they end up being just like a really amazing book and you just don't know that until you finish it obviously so yeah these are both Christmas presents and those are all the books I have for this Black Friday book haul unboxing if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know if you got any books this black friday or let me know if you bought yourself any books for christmas or what books you got for other people for some reason like when i want to buy presents for myself i always just get a bunch of books and i just don't get anything else so when people ask me what i want i never tell them books <laughs> so literally all the books i get for christmas are from myself and i'm totally okay with that because i don't want a chance them getting me something i would just never read but yeah now i'm ranting <laughs> Please subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it if you feel like it. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.